What's up guys, it's me, the Don Fanatic, and welcome to my draft analysis of the NSTL, a new showdown league commissioned by Grey Ice, also known as Jack. Um, a new league which has been in the works for a couple of months now. Um, basically, a bunch of guys, experienced, non-experienced, just getting together, having a you know fun showdown league, no weird... Um, rules or anything pretty standard rule wise um, however there's some interesting Pokemon banned and unbanned this season and definitely some interesting drafts and drafts is the reason why we're here today this is my draft analysis if you haven't been able to tell by the thumbnail and the well the image right in front of you um, spoilers the two Pokemon on the left may or may not be in my draft um, but yeah we're here for my draft analysis for the Norwich Skitty we are sticking with the team name no, it hasn't had much success really but we're sticking with it and uh, I'm quite confident this season um, with the draft I've got some tough battles ahead for sure um, there are also some new guys so you know gotta be wary of them um, don't want to be causing you know be, be at the, the downfall of many upsets or anything like that but hey it's the way Pokemon goes um, but anyway rather than me just rambling on we should probably just get straight into the draft analysis so should go into this I I believe it's a 120 point budget basically PPL styling was used um, I think the budget was kept and I think just some prices may have been adjusted if not were the same um, it's 11 maximum 9 minimum I believe um, mega isn't mandatory um, and then you've got a separate 25 million pound budget for Z Mons and the price of a Z-Mon is the same as the Mon in its uh, normal pricing so I'll explain it in a minute because the first Pokemon I have is probably like the best Z-Move user um, or if not the best one of the best and um, I don't know how it got to me because I think I was ninth overall um, in the draft order and I, I feel like I repeat this all the time but once again I want a Tapu Koko I just want a Tapu Koko I feel like it would suit my playstyle so much and it's the one I want to try but alas Again, like in the PPL, it sniped like a turn or two before me. So I got really upset, but there were some really cool Pokemon still hanging about. Um, so I'm not too upset. I did want to try Tapu Koko, but... Uh, and I had like a whole gross core, like Tapu Koko, Mega Medicham, ready to go. Um, but hey, that had to be thrown out of the window. Some of the, like, the team that I have built is still here uh, in some capacity. Um... But I've just had to kind of play around with, with with what I could get. So rather than sort of hanging around, let's get straight into uh, the round one pick. Now, uh, I believe, do I have the draft open? Okay, so I can tell you. Aegislash is unbanned. I forgot to say that. Mega Latias is unbanned. And so is Mega Marwile. So Aegislash uh, went round one. Jirachi, Mega Latias, Tabacoco. Lando, oh, Lando Incarnate with Sheer Force is also unbanned, um, but we're not allowed Z-moves on it. Uh, went. So there was lots of good Mons, Mega Lopini, Zygarde 50%, so it's understandable why the Mon I got didn't go first, because there was so many good round one picks available to everyone. Literally everyone got a good round one pick, um, maybe other than debatable Celebi, but we won't go into that, we'll let them go over their own justification for that. Also, I was 10th in the draft, not 9th, sorry. Um, we did actually manage to get uh, Lando T, Round one uh, for 18 million pounds. So a mon I've never used before in draft league format. Um, definitely a mon that I'm really excited to use. Um, Z, you know, Tectonic Rage or Supersonic Sky Strike from base 145. Even if you want to run special attacking, about 105 special attack. You know, it gives you strong hidden powers. Um, this thing's move ball is great. Um, you know, it gets like your sludge waves and your superpowers and your stone edges and rock polish. Swords Dance, Defog, Stealth Rocks, um, Shame, uh, you know, this thing would be amazing if it had Roost, but that might be too much. Um, Lander T though, I'm really excited to use this thing. Main sort of, you know, the main sort of reason I wanted this is it can fill so many roles. Hopefully I can use it offensively, because I feel like that's probably what it does best, bulky offense. Um, but you know, it can be used defensively if you want. It's an Intimidate user. Intimidate is always nice for stopping those physical threats. Um, like I said, strong earthquakes or, you know, tectonic rages, flies, acrobatics, um, supersonic sky strikes. And I've already mentioned how great its move pool is. Um, 145 physical attack, you know, is ridiculous. And after a rock polish, this thing doesn't even necessarily need 
Sword Stance Boost if you can weaken the team a bit, and I've definitely got team support that can weaken walls or uh, the, you know the more frail things so they die in one hit from this this guy um not really too much else i can say really because it's the first round pick so i can't talk about the synergy it has with my team um but you know it's a ground weakness and it's an electric weakness so two two immunities not weakness sorry immunities immunity already um and as you see there's i think my team has something ridiculous like eight immunities um so overall, me knowing like the greater picture of my draft, this fits with the draft really well, but not really much I can say other than, you know, it's a round one Landorus T. Um, it's going to happen in, dra in a draft format because it's such a good mod, uh, mainly because of Z moves. And I will obviously say this is one of my uh, Z users. So I'd spent 18 of my 25 million budget, which does mean there's only one other mod in my draft which could afford to be a Z move user, but we'll go over that when we get to it. Um, but yeah, that, that's pretty much Lando T, not much else I can really say about that thing because you guys who are watching this probably know what it does. Um, second round, I really don't know how this mod lasted to, um, well, I think it's only pick 16, no, 12, 13, 14, round 15. I really don't know how it lasted this long because it's ridiculously good. Like, I might say it's even better than, oh, shut up, phone, I need to meet my phone. I might even argue it's better than Lando T. It's definitely the best Ultra Beast in the format. Um, other than Nagan Adele, if you unban that thing and you're crazy. Um, we have got Celesteela, so immediately, guys, we've got Lando T and Celesteela on the same team. I'm excited. Um, again, another ground resistance. Not, not that I'm too worried about, you know, being ground weak at this point. Um, Celesteela's just Celesteela. It's fat and it's strong. <laughs> I mean, Heavy Slam, what is a Heavy Slam switching? Um, you know, oh, you might think, ah, oh, fire types are safe. Nope, earthquake. Um, oh, you know, um, water types are safe. Nope, seed bomb, giga drain. Um, oh, I don't know what other type is resist steel. Um, <laughs> you know, steel types maybe. Nope, again, earthquake. Um, it also gets flamethrower. It also gets air slash acrobatics. Um, again, I haven't got it as Z move user because I can't afford it. But again, a ridiculously good Z move user. Autotomize. Yes, even though it does, you know, make this thing a bit lighter. Who cares? Heavy Slam still does ridiculous damage. Um, and then you've got, I think, you know, possibly one of the best abilities going in the game in Beast Boost. And what makes Celesteela so good at using Beast Boost is literally attack, defense, special attack, or special defense can get boosted by Beast Boost. Um, and it's physical attack and special attack, while they're not, you know, Sky high, 101, I think, 107, 103, 107. I have actually got it here in front of me. It is base 101 attack, 103 defense, 107 special attack, 101 special defense, 97 HP, 61 speed. Obviously, speed isn't something it's really focusing on because it's so goddamn tanky. Um, it's got reliable ish recovery um, in Leech Seed, and Leech Seed is a huge pain to a lot of teams. Um, just overall, this thing is a pain. Heavy Slam, you know, doesn't have many switch-ins, and if you feel that you do have a switch-in, there is coverage, which makes it not a switch-in. Um, with Lando T and Celesteela, I feel like I've got two, you know, either potential wall breakers or, you know, late game sweepers. Sadly, Celesteela doesn't get Defog or Roost or Stealth Rock, um, but like I said, it's kind of here just to be bulky. Um, you'll see there's quite a recurring theme with most mons in my team. Um, but it's bulky offense, and like I said, it can set up and it can sweep, you know, just a plus two of beast boost if you let it do so. Um, that's pretty much it with Celesteela. I mean, obviously, it, it kind of covers a nice weakness. Lando T has, I say kind of, you know, it's neutral, but ice types don't want to stay in on Celesteela because of the heavy slam, because of the flamethrower. Um, and, you know, um, Lando can potentially switch in on any kind of like fire. Um, or electric moves that Celesteela might be getting hit with because you know obviously super effective and even then you know fire electric type moves won't kill this thing I'm pretty sure Celesteela can live like plus one Thunderbolt from Tapu Koko in electric surge that's how ridiculously bulky this thing can be um, so yeah I'm just really excited to use Celesteela and the first two picks are fat and strong and I really like it um, Next up, round three. Um, I've kind of mentioned that I've got two ground immunities. Um, I kind of want some more hazard setters, and I might want to expand to, you know, like spikes, toxic spikes, um, sticky webs, stuff like that if I can. Um, it goes, like I said, it goes all the way around again, so let's look at some of the things that go around too. There's Mega Diancy, Mew, Garchomp, Bulu, Torn T, 
um, a Dragonite, Mega Glade, Scolipede, Thunderous, Ferian, Azumarill, Zapdos, Clefable, Gliscor, Salamence, Rotomwash, Skarmory, Entei, Hydreigon, uh, Heatran, Arcanine, then there's me again. So the guy, uh, like, I really wanted Hydreigon <coughs> originally. My draft plan with uh, Tapu Koko and make a Medcham because I thought, you, good luck. Um, to my opponents, um, but that didn't happen like I said. So, like I did mention a second ago, I wanted some more hazards. So, round three, I went for Nihilego again, another Ultra Beast. You guys probably already knew this is what was coming because of my thumbnail and the front screen. Um, 14, I feel, is ridiculously cheap for Nihilego. Um, yes, its move pool isn't hugely varied, but it's definitely varied enough. Um, Plus it gets Beast Boost which can go into Special Defense, Special Attack or Speed. There's no reason why you want it in Attack or Defense because they're both really low. Um, but this thing's got like ridiculously good, um, let me get the stats up again. So it's got 127 Special Attack, 131 Special Defense, 103 Speed, 109 HP. 103 Speed is a really nice speed tier. Um, obviously it allows me to speed creep some hundreds, speed base 100 speeds that is, um, put some extra bulk in which you know could be pivotal in the game. Um, moves wise you know it gets um, enough coverage like I said, Dazzling Gleam, um, it gets, <laughs> so it gets Head Smash and Gunk Shot, I, I doubt I'll ever use those, um, but you know Grass Knot, uh, Foul Play is really cool on this thing because like it has such a low um, physical attack stat, uh, it does get knockoff if I fancy utility knockoff, um, Poison Jab, nope, here we go, Power Gem, Psychic, Psy Shock, Sludge Wave, uh, Stealth Rocks, Thunderbolt, Thunder Wave, Toxic Spikes, um, Charge Beam, you know, if I've answered that, any obviously hidden power, um, I could run Sandstorm if, if I felt particularly mad one week, um, because obviously it would boost my special defense, it gets Worry Seed, which is interesting, it can get rid of um, certain abilities, Tickle, interesting it gets thunder i didn't know that um role play so i can swap uh no sorry i can copy an ability not that i will because like i said beast boost is ridiculously good um yeah just lots of things going for this guy mainly you know the toxic spikes help break down some of the walls that my opponents will have um and you know rock uh and poison itself is like really nice coverage um my first two mons might kind of you know be troubled by ice types. Nihilego can stop that with uh, power gems um, off its ridiculously good special attack. Um, sludge waves deal with those fairies which aren't really an issue. I don't see fairies being an issue to my team at all whatsoever um, because like I said, I've got Celesteela on Nihilego. Good luck bringing your fairies against them too. Um, just overall a really cool mon. I have used it once before. Um, and I, I felt like um, it kind of fits my playstyle. I like playing aggressive, um, but again, it's kind of bulky offense, um, but I need the toxic spikes. That will allow some of my later mons to break things down, or, you know, Landorus and Celesteel to come in late game and just clean up and, and, and win. Um, like I said, toxic spikes were pretty much the main reason I wanted this. I think originally I wanted Scolipede, because the speed uh, boost would be quite nice, because my team is a bit slow at the moment, but that gets fixed later on. Um, and you know it gives it spikes and toxic spikes. Um, I've got rocks and landorus and I do get rocks later on uh, I believe maybe maybe I don't No, I don't actually so actually um, in the end the Halego fits really nicely because like I said um, I've got two ground immunities that uh, can abuse this thing's four times weakness to ground um, uh, The team later on just synergizes really well with this thing really excited to use this so Three rounds in, we've got ourselves a Lando T, Celestial, and Nihilego. That said that wrong, Nihilego. Sorry. Um, looking really scary so far. So round four, I kind of think, right, I'll get one more kind of offensive threat um, and support-ish type mon before I go to sort of like my obvious bulk. Um, so we are going to get round four. Uh, let's just go over some things that go round three and round four because it's going to go cycle again with Arcanine, Heatran. No, I've already said those. Um, Kartana, Thunderous, Greninja went round four. That's ridiculous. Um, I did consider that as well. <coughs> Tangrowth, which was in my original plan. Uh, Florgius. Oh no, sorry, no, they were the only four that went because I picked again on a wheel pick kind of thing. So round four, we do get a nice Ribombi. Now, I did mention about my speed tiers earlier. Um, Ribombi's here, one, because it's fast, two, because it's a very um, quite a strong-ish fairy. Like, it's, its stats, its base stats other than its speed aren't 
super impressive. Like, 95 special attack is okay. It's quite frail outside of its 124 base speed, which is ridiculous. Um, so, you know, it's not too impressive, sort of stats looking-wise. But then, uh, at 11 million, the main appeal to this thing for me is sticky webs. I have never tried using sticky webs in draft format before, but I felt like... Um, at this point, I wasn't planning on getting another fairy in the draft, but that does change, as you'll see. Um, sticky webs with some things I get later on, and Celesteel and Hilego and Landorus is, quite frankly, frightening. Um, if you're slower than my Landorus at plus two, um, with a Z move or not, you know, Life Orb, Choice Band, even Choice Band Earthquake, if you've got no switch ins, you're slower than everything because, you know, Sticky Web, Sticky Web's also negates Choice Scarf and it means they're still locked into a room, uh, a room? Locked into a room, yes Jack, it's because I was reading something else on the screen. Um, locked into a move but not faster than things. Um, it could partner really well. Now obviously it doesn't mean I'm going to bring um, Rebombi as, as a uh, Sticky Web user every week. Um, it does get a really good move pool. And it does, you know, kind of really, you know, it, it can be used as a setup sweeper. It can be used as like just a hard hitting bug and fairy. Bug and fairy is really cool. Um, you know, it hits quite a few types. Again, grass, um, dragons, um, psychic. What else is there? I, I'm just gone blank. Um, it does give me like another U turner. So I've now got Lando and Rabombi. Obviously, it's not going to be the most powerful U turn user, but again, momentum is nice. Just going over some moves that it can really benefit from. It's got Calm Mind, but it gets Quiver Dance, so there's no point in using Calm Mind whatsoever. Baton Pass, sadly, I can't use um, Baton Pass and Quiver Dance, but I believe I could use Baton Pass and Calm Mind, maybe? That could be interesting. Aromatherapy, Dazzling Gleam, I don't need because it gets Moonblast. A Defog, Energy Ball, um, Psychic, Quiver Dance, like I said, it gets Roost. Um, it gets Signal Beam Bug Buzz, but um, honestly, it's like special move I like I don't know why bug buzz is suggested and it's um, it's normal move is isn't you know pollen puff is actually higher base power um, I guess bug buzz does get, does get the chance to special defense drop which is quite nice but you know pollen puff does give you that uh, base 90 special bug move which you know base 10 could be the difference of a kill or not it gets an interesting move in speed swap not that I really want to use that because uh, it's fast and you know fast is nice um, I'm just struggling to look at some really weird moves right now but uh, you know you get the you get the idea I guess trick as well actually which I didn't realize tailwind stun spore could be interesting uh, nice way to paralyze some things didn't realize I got that um, nature power uh, I think it defaults to try attack on showdown like you know the normal game so not much use there um, but maybe in terrains it could be quite nice who knows um, yeah and like I said it's here mainly for the support but again you know, I could stick a Choice Scarf on this thing and it'll outspeed almost the whole meta, bar a few Megas and really fast things like Weavile, um, uh, Crobat, things like that. And, you know, in certain matchups against maybe more frail teams or against uh, offensive ones, you know, Moonblast and Pollen Puff will be able to pick up the kills or Energy Ball if I fancy surprising like a Swampert or a Gastrodon or any other ward type, for example. And U Turn, you know, again, gives me momentum because I think Rabombi could be used. Um, either like as a chance for maybe a bulky mon to come in and just you know recover itself or, or set up so u-turn is really nice there but you know uh, a, a cool mon a, cool, a mon i'm really excited to use because i have wanted to use it for a while um, and, and i finally have it and i feel with like the first three mons the the fact that i have sticky web in these three let alone the rest of my draft is pretty frightening for anyone that i have to face so um next up the next three mons aren't very exciting i'll give you that but they do form a ridiculously gross core, and uh, I'm. It, it's not the original core I planned. Um, I think I only got one of the three which I originally planned, but it still works because the typing's pretty much there and everything like that. Um, so first up in this core is going to be Slowbro, just regular Slowbro. Um, as you can see, I had a bit of an ice-ish weakness. Um, nothing on my team appreciates ice so slow bro can can fill that role um still looking a bit potentially weak to dark but that does get fixed a bit later on ribombi i would say is my dark check but it's it's pretty frail um we all know what slow bro does it's fat um you know base 80 special defense 100 special attack 110 defense 95 hp 
it gets uh, it's a good user of Rocky Helmet, can obviously use leftovers. AV is cool because of its amazing ability in a regenerator. It recovers a third of HP when it switches out. It does get reliable recovery in Slack Off too. And then its move pool is is excuse me, pretty varied. I mean you can run I say run. Kind of run physical moves in this thing with base 75 attack. But it gets coverage on both sides. Aquatail, Avalanche, Body Slam, Brick Break, Calm Mind is a cool move. Uh, Disable is nice tech, maybe against some teams. Drain Punch, Earthquake, Fire Blast, Flame Thrower, Focus Blast, Focus Punch. Foul Play is a cool move, obviously on any sort of specially based mon. Um, grass Knot, Ice Beam, Ice Punch, Psychic, Psy Shock, Scald, uh, Shadow Ball, Signal Beam, um, Try Attack for some reason. Trick, Trick Room, again a good use of Trick Room because of how slow it is. Belly drum, yep, that, that, that's definitely a cool one. Aerial ace, didn't know got aerial ace, <coughs> but you know, you get the idea. A cool mon that has loads of utility um, and loads of different coverage moves. A mon that's generally quite hard to take down. Um, you know, again, <coughs> a bit susceptible to knock off, but if I run Coral Berry on like a defensive set, knock off won't be doing too much, and then it can maybe take some uh, dark moves a bit better, unless you know it's like something like Dark Pulse. Um, because knockoff, foul play, that kind of thing won't be doing too much to a slow bro. But it's part of my um, bulky core, which you'll see in a moment. Um, and as you can tell, you know, it, uh, it has regenerated. So you can probably guess what the next few of my mons, um, what sort of mold they're going to be in. Um, not really much else I can say about slow bro, to be honest with you, I don't think. Um, but next up, we have actually got Amoongus. Now, originally I did want Tangrowth. Um, Amoongus has its own drawbacks um, and it, obviously its own, you know, buffs, I guess, over having um, Tangrowth. Like, for example, um, it's a bit weaker. I think its HP stat is bigger. Like, it, base 114 HP. I've got like a recurring theme. I've got a lot of HP on my team 95 Slowbro, 190 Hilego, 97 Celestine, I think. Um, and Lando's is what 89, so some decently high HP stats here. Um, but actually, you know, I, I always thought Amoongus was a bit weak. Um, but base 85 in both attack and special attack actually isn't too bad. Um, 70 defense and 80 special defense combined with that HP stat is gross. Um, and its abilities, I mean, it has effects for and re again regenerates. You can see where I'm going with this. Um, a great regenerator core with Slowbro. They actually complement each other pretty damn well. Amoongus obviously takes the um, electric moves that might be coming in, maybe not the dark moves. Um, if it is a special dark type though, <coughs> Amoongus with its special defense and HP can take some hits. Can also take physical hits like knockoff and stuff if I really want to. Um, Slowbro can switch in and take the fire and ice moves that Amoongus would want. Um, you know, they just, they just synergize with each other pretty damn well. And Amoongus can get some really cool moves. Um, again, some really cool kind of tech moves. Foul play is always nice. Um, clear smog is great um, at getting rid of all those setup uh, options, especially on things like uh, I think Mega Sable I was drafted, so where you can't roar it, you can potentially clear smog it um, if he hasn't got substitute. Um, we've got what else we got? Sludge Bomb. Doesn't get Sludge Wave, which is a bit weird. Um, Synthesis, uh, Spore, Stomping Tantrum is interesting. Um, some things might not be expecting that. You know, Seed Bomb, so it does have coverage to kind of work both sides. Um, it, its coverage, its move port isn't that varied. It does have like the hidden powers, Giga Drain. It does have Aromatherapy, Synthesis, so it can heal itself. It can look after itself, it can do a bit of damage. But, like, otherwise, its move port isn't that great. Um, but it, it's here and it does the job that it, you know, needs to do, which is be fat, annoy teams. I really wish this thing got Leech Seed, that would be gross, um, I understand why it doesn't have Leech Seed, but again, there's not really much I can say, it's fat, it partners Slowbro really well, and the Regenerator Core is, is nice, doesn't mean you have to run Black Sludge, obviously if you do run Black Sludge, then you're going to be recovering a lot of HP, because like I said, it gets Synthesis as well, but it can, it's a good user of Rocky Helmet, it can use Assault Vest if you really want to, not sure why you want to, but you know, it can benefit from it, and it can even go kind of offensive in Trick Room, and while I do have like a reasonably fast, you know, few mons in Nihilego Rebombium, maybe Landorus if you consider 91 speed um, fast, there is that potential for Trick Room as well as Slowbro. 
Um, so that's uh, two of the three bulky mons um, we have got. And then what I'm going to do is quickly go back to showdown so I can get the other mons up. Here we go, so I can get their stats in front of me. Uh, the final mon of this uh, core. Um, I think it's something that's maybe slept on a little bit uh, in, in draft format because it can do a lot of things rather nicely. That is Ordino. And Ordino is actually our second Z-Move user because I only had seven budget left. And spoilers, my last, I only have nine mons in this draft. Last two mons in this draft um, are too expensive to be Z users. So, um, I just stuck a Z crystal on this thing because it's a normal type. Its move pool is ridiculous. Um, again, I'm on with a lot of HP, base 103, base 86 in both defenses. And again, this thing can partner up with. Um, Amoongus and Slowbro really nicely. Um, obviously, it's weak to fighting. That's its only weakness. Slowbro and Amoongus check both of those. It's immune to Ghost, which is super effective against Slowbro. And overall, 103, 86, 86 is just pretty gross. Now, yes, it's only got 60 attack. Yes, it's only got 60 special attack and 50 speed. So this thing might be seen as an opportunity for setup. But what this does give me as a Zemi user is a lovely, lovely, lovely knockoff switch in or one of um, and overall it's just generally fat and because like I said it's a normal type its move pool is ridiculous it gets set up in car mind dazzling gleam obviously because it has, has got that mega revolution um, which I believe did get drafted actually uh, drain punch encore is a fantastic move in draft catch something setting up um, flamethrower fire blast grass not heal bell is something like I said I have aromatherapy on the Amoongus, but I think Heal Bell is more <coughs> likely to be run on this thing. And Z Heal Bell also does fully heal this thing up because uh, it's healing, while it's amazing, uh, is, is Wish. Um, it's obviously a two-turn recovery move, so Z uh, Heal Bell could be something. Um, it does get Healing Wish, which, you know, if I feel like, oh, you know, I'm going to go early game Lando T uh, or Celestial and Black. Right, okay, it's low. I'm going to Healing Wish, and now it's there for the late game as well. It can keep some of my massive threats going. Uh, Hyper Voice is a cool move for it to have. Base 90 special attack goes through substitutes. Ice Beam, uh, Ice Punch, Knock Off, Low Kick, Power Up Punch, Pain Split, Psychic, Psy Shock, Shadow Ball, Signal Beam, Stomping Tantrum, Surf, Thunderbolt, Thunder Punch, Thunder Wave, Toxic, Trick Room, Wish, um, Charge Beam. I'm looking through the the, the non-helpful moves here apparently. Iron Tail, Icy Wind is nice, it can reduce them speed stats. Role play to co uh, copy an ability. Uh, skill swap, <coughs> for example, huge power and stuff. Throat Chop can stop those uh, voice moves like Mega Gardevoir or uh, Sylveon. A yawn is quite nice as I have found out, you know, forcing switches and uh, stopping setup. Its move all is ridiculous, but the main draw, again, is it gets the ability regenerator. So now I've got Amoongus, Slowbro, and uh, Ordino as uh, a regenerator core, which is, yay, um, fat. But um, Ordino is something that could potentially get set up on, so I do have to bear that in mind. Um, but if, you know, they don't have a strong fighting type, opponents are going to struggle to kill Ordino. I really wish it got cosmic power because that would just be not fair. But, um, you know, Calm Mind setting up, Wish Passing, um, it's Cleric. It can run Bolt Beam, you know, if I just feel like, you know, coverage would be nice. Um, it's move pool is just gross. Um, toxic Stool if I really wanted to. Again, could be like a, 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 it's a Z user, like I said, but again, Rocky Helmet could be something. Um, just general leftovers don't really know what else it could hold but uh, you know it's a cool mon which completes my regenerator core um, and it's just gross really so I'm really happy with uh, getting Ordino a cheap mon at five <laughs> with all of the things it can do uh, yeah I, I feel like it's a bit of a steal so um, moving on to my eighth pick um, I need an electric type I need a fire type so um, I do decide to get Rotom Heat now I haven't used I actually think I've used a Rotom form ever in draft format. Um, I've never really been drawn to it because bulky things I like to have kind of like the recovery but I do have Wish Pass and I do actually need some more hazard removal and Rotom Heat isn't the best for it because of Stealth Rocks but it's also really good for it because it's immune to Sticky Webs, Spikes and Toxic Spikes. So definitely a really good Sticky Web user. In, uh, 
don't defog user in that sense. Because otherwise I have defog on Rabombi and defog on Lando, and I don't necessarily want to run that every week. I believe my last one also gets defog as well, but we'll go for that in a moment. Um, but Rome Heat, um, I appreciate it's not a flexible fire type, but overheat from this thing can do good damage because it does get a, what is it, base 105 special attack? That's going to do a lot of damage from Choice Specs Rome Heat. Um, 107 defense, 107 special defense now. It does have a lower HP stat, but you know, it's quite fast as well, 86 speed, so a fast, bulky mon. Um, slow or fast fault switches, it's up to me really. Like I said, defog, um, discharge for that paralyzation chance, but uh, you know, dark pulse, I'm pretty sure it gets foul play. Yeah, um, overheat, like I said, shadow ball, sucker punch even, thunderbolt, thunder wave, will o wisp, that's a really good move for me because I don't think anything on my team gets it at this point, so I do have that chance to burn some physical threats. Again, another trick user, I've got lots of trick users without even realizing. Um, you know, people know what the Rotom's do. I think Rotom Wash is probably the most, you know, well-known. But Rotom Heat is definitely up there with one of the, the better ones. Obviously, you've got uh, Fan and Fridge, or whatever it's called, um, which maybe aren't so good. Um, but yeah, it, you know, nothing special with Rotom Heat. But again, it's a mod which is pretty cool, and it just fits my team really well. I wanted an electric type, and needed something that has fire type stab. I've got mons which can do fire type things, uh, like will have fire type coverage, Celesteela, um, Slowbro, <laughs> or Dino, maybe not the hardest hitting, Celesteela can be. Um, but you see, you know, that, that overheat could be quite nice, and again, Vault Switching, uh, and Levitate, just overall, generally great abilities really for this thing. Um, not much else I can say on Rome Heat, you know, just fits the general fat fastish team again you know like even with sticky webs this thing can just you know overheat and vault switch out every time if the opponent's slower it's it's great trust me um and then finally um round nine i looked at my team and i was like right i do potentially have a moon and do potentially have a dino Rabombi, i'm not even going to classify as a dark type switch in because it's got like base 60 defenses that's nothing and dark types like Hydra I can do get the coverage like flamethrower, which will just destroy the Bombi. So, um, decided that I am going to actually draft another mon which I've never used before. I think I've only ever used um, Nihilego in this draft, otherwise they're all new to me. And that is actually Mega Altaria. Now, Mega Altaria is gross in this team. Again, something fat. Something that can hit quite hard, another potential setup mon, something that can hit decently hard off the you know off the go because of Pixelate and it does get 110 attack, 110 special attack, it does get return, it does get hyper voice, it can hit on either spectrum, it does get fantastic coverage, because it's a dragon. Um, it gets um, what does it get? It's got body slam as well, which can run paralysis. Didn't even think of that before. Um, it's got Dragon Claw, Draco Meteor, Dragon Dance, Dragon Pulse, Defog again, so you know, four defogger. Earthquake, Facade, if this thing gets poisoned and you get a pixelate Facade off, that's gross. Fire Blast, Flamethrower, does it get, it doesn't get Ice Beam. Yes, it does get Ice Beam rather, that's that's gross too. Um, it gets Pursuit, which I didn't actually know. It gets Roar, Roost, um, Heal Bell, um, Refresh, Tailwind, um, Home Claws, I mean, not really any reason to use that over Dragon Dance. Um, Cotton Guard, <laughs> Cotton Guard on this thing can be gross. Um, haze to stop setup. It's it's just a really cool looking mon. Even with base 8 speed, it's not slow. It's not fast, but again, with sticky webs, it can then outspeed certain things. And with Dragon Dance up and sticky webs potentially up, it can cause havoc, because like I said, its coverage is great. Um, it's a fairy type, and it's a mega, so it's going to be taking nothing from knockoff. Um, <clears throat> things like Hydreigon can't hit me with their dragon because I am a fairy. Um, it could have flash cannon, but base 110, no, 110 defense, 105 special defense, 75 HP is pretty fat. This thing can take some hits. Um, I'm just looking if it has any other weird moves. Not that I can see. Mirror move, psych up, power swap, interesting. Uh, solar beam, <laughs> sunny day, solar beam, sure, why not? Um, it's just a really fat mon kind of fits in with the team uh, that, that I've got so far. It's a dark type switch in. It's a dragon, which I didn't have and dragons are cool. And while it's not the strongest dragon, it's a dragon nevertheless. Um, and fairies, you know, sure you can switch into it if you want, but you know, you're going to have to take a pixelated boosted hyper voice or, or return. 
So yeah, that's that's pretty much the team. Sorry if I haven't gone like too in depth. I I know it's 35 minutes. So I didn't want to go too into it. Um, <coughs> hopefully you guys do enjoy the, the the sort of season ahead. I feel like I've got a solid chance with this team. It's pretty gross. Lots of setup opportunity. Lots of power. Lots of bulk. Lots of just general grossness uh, in this draft. A lot of people have told me it's gross, and they're glad to have to play it. Um, but you know, I'm sure that when I look at each team building there will be something that I'm like oh crap I can't deal with this can't deal with that um, because you know there's always flaws with some drafts and I know there is in this one like for example I only have Sucker Punch from Rotom Heat and yeah I think that's it Sucker Punch from Rotom Heat is priority um, which isn't the best but hey we'll we'll live with it um, like the general bulk we have means we probably shouldn't be dying to priority um, but yeah for example you know every draft will have its pluses and weaknesses so yeah um let me know what you guys think of the draft in the comments um week one should be up next weekend i believe um and it's against my good friend ben uh kikori uh you might know him as zydro or dot he goes by many different names and he needs to bloom and pick one um but uh yeah i'll try and make a team builder sort of thing in the battle video uh for that game so we'll go over his draft and what i've got and everything like that but yeah, let me uh, let me know if you guys are excited to see all this. Let me know what you guys think of the team. Make sure you leave a like if you have enjoyed. And I will see you next week for the first uh, or the inaugural, inaugural, inaugural battle of the NSTL. Bye.